biggest line of bullshit currently being slung around about the American economy is the notion that big business isn't hiring because of uncertainty. We hear this from rich bastard CEOs, and then it gets parroted by the trolls at Fox and the disingenuous scum running for the Republican nomination like it's some kind of gospel without a hint of critical thinking. Let me break it down for you. Corporate America doesn't like President Obama because he might be willing to take away some of the unfair preferential treatment they get from Washington, so they're going to be uncertain until they've reinstalled a Republican president to continue sucking them off. And they're more than willing to continue letting the U.S. economy tank and holding back on hiring until they've made sure America is angry and irrational enough to vote the way they want them to. Do you really think that the business sector magically getting into a better mood whenever they get a right-wing president in office is a coincidence or the result of policy? Give me a break. That's the bad news, but I've got worse news for you. Republicans and Democrats are both lying their asses off when it comes to jobs in America. Republicans promise that once they get into power, they'll turn off all those evil government regulations and all the farms and factories and small industrial towns and lines of guys stomping off to nine-to-fives and coveralls and lunch pails and all that bullshit you hear in the lyrics to a thousand Springsteen songs. It's all going to come roaring back to life and be just like it used to be. That's what they're saying, and they're fucking liars. Democrats, on the other hand, promise that once they regulate all only the bad guys, all that same stuff is going to come back, and what doesn't come back is going to get supplemented by green jobs. Also fucking liars. Here's the reality, folks. This is not us anymore. We are not a manufacturing slash agricultural economy anymore. We haven't been for a long time now. It's way past due for us to come to grips with this and start making the necessary adjustments. And no, I don't just mean putting a band-aid on it. That never actually helps. For example, do you know why Americans are so fucking fat? Well, okay, yes, it's partially because a frightening number of us are too stupid to read a nutritional information label. But it's also partly because everything you eat has too much corn in it. You know why? Well, a few decades ago, we started to realize that the bottom was falling out of the American farming industry. But because nobody wanted to spit in the eye of our collective nostalgia for the golden age of Old MacDonald, and because we didn't want a legion of economically displaced farmers storming the capital like an army of redneck Robespierre's, the government decided to put a band-aid on the situation by artificially propping up the agricultural sector. And so, because corn is one of the few things American farmers are consistently better at growing in mass quantities than almost anyone else in the world, the government subsidizes the shit out of of the corn business. Yeah, it would have been painful and crummy to just say up front at the start of things, well, sorry folks, but time marches on, the era of red barns and moo cows and pitchforks is done with, so you might want to start learning some other way to make a living, but all we did was kick the problem down the road. We're still eventually going to get shut out of the international produce market by the developing world, and now we've got rampant obesity as a bonus. You hear economists talk up the idea that we need to ease up on CEOs because they're America's quote-unquote job creators. Well, that used to be true a couple decades ago when the economy was still mostly terrestrial and a given company's influence extended directly outward from a physical work site. That's not the world anymore, though. The world has gone digital, wireless, global, whatever term you like, and it's not coming back. The point is that corporate fortunes can be almost completely disconnected from their physical surroundings. A thriving company can exist smack dab in the middle of a failing state. So yeah, you loosen the restraints and corporate America will create jobs, they just won't need to create them here, and maybe not even for human beings anywhere. That's another reality of the job market. In an increasingly mechanized society, fewer and fewer hands-on manufacturing, farming, construction, etc. jobs are going to be needed. Hell, we probably have way more human beings working in those sectors right now than we really need. We just haven't allowed that changeover to happen all at once because, just like with the farmers, who needs the headache of legions of newly homeless assembly line spot welders marching through the streets? But one way or another, that's where we're heading. Most of those factories that are closed are going to stay closed. And if they do reopen, they're going to reopen full of robots. If you're planning on a career in manufacturing, start aiming for a specialized field or custom work. Not general, because it ain't going to be there. Don't even ask about the ones that went overseas. Democrats will tell you that imposing some kind of penalty or tariff on companies that do it will make the jobs come back here. And Republicans swear that if you just break up all the unions and repeal the minimum wage, companies will start hiring again. Bullshit. Fact of the matter is, there's no way that the baseline price of living of the average American worker can compete with a third world worker who's willing to do five times the work for what amounts to a slave wage on the simple basis that you can afford to pay people less where the standard of living is lower. 
the United States of America is in the process of an economic transition from primarily being an industrial agricultural economy with power distributed across the interstates to a financial, arts, tech, and science economy with power overwhelmingly concentrated on the coasts. This is not a bad thing, nor is it inherently a good thing, as much as I personally enjoy the notion of strapping, physically adept so-called alpha male types finding themselves rendered useless anachronisms in a world where steel surpasses muscle and economic worth favors the intelligent and creative instead, but really it's a simple matter of cultural evolution. And if you look around you, it's already started to fall into place on its own. Just maybe not fast enough. People starting families later in life, having fewer children, lessened emphasis on community roots and long-term living in a single location, greater emphasis on a mobilized life, urban coastal culture having much greater impact than rural inner culture. It's all very inexorable. And the worst thing we can do in response is to try and hold it back by artificially propping up industries, communities, hell, maybe even whole regions that have effectively outlived their practical rationale for existence. I mean, look, I'm all for a little nostalgia, folks, but there's a big difference between me rebuying my old He-Mans on eBay and the government spending billions to keep the heartland on life support as some kind of monument to when it used to mean something. America has the opportunity, if Americans are willing to be brutally honest with themselves, to be at the forefront of this great leap forward, just like we were at the last great leap forward directly following World War II. The future could be quite a place, if we have the guts to go there. Thank <laughs> you.